Okay, hi everybody. Good Saturday night to you, and it's a Saturday night after we've had quite a day of rainy football situations interrupted by all kinds of lightning strikes, and this is VipeFortBend.com, and our nightcap game is the Travis Tigers, the visiting team tonight, taking on the Dulles Vikings. James Kovaleski is here. Welcome in, James. Sure, glad to be here. And I am Roger Smith, and we've been waiting this thing out and uh, our crazy day started with a 1 p.m. game where Ridgepoint took a lead of 27 to 7 over the Elkins Knights and then about halfway through the second quarter lightning interfered and lightning kept recurring and therefore they just decided to call that game as a victory for Ridgepoint final score 27 to 7. Meanwhile we were supposed to start this game between Travis and Dulles here at Hall Stadium at 6 o'clock. But now here it is about 7.23, and we're going to get it started at 7.25 or thereabouts. Uh, James, did you see the referee tell us which team is going to receive and which team is going to kick? Uh, I, I didn't see him make any signal of any kind. No, but we, I will be able to tell you that here in just a second. Okay. So here's the situation Dulles in District. What's that? Dulles is going to receive. Okay, great. Okay, Dulles will receive. And going back to... Return it is Cole Hodges. He wears number 16. We also see Alfred Entwi. Hodges is a junior. Entwi is a senior. And it'll be Antonio Rubio for Travis. He's got one heck of a leg. He can usually boot the ball into the end zone, but, you know, there's so much heavy dampness in the air, I'm not sure that he'll be able to get his usual distance. But here we go, Travis defending the north goal here at Hall Stadium and kicking off to start this contest, and we are underway. It's a high kick, it lands short of the goal line, and it's not going to roll into the end zone, so Hodges has to bring it out from the two to the near side, outside the numbers, near the 20, a flag comes in. He breaks the tackle, keeps going, and wrestled out at the 27, but they're going to take some yards off of this kickoff return, some kind of infraction either for holding or an illegal block. Yeah, great kick there by uh, Rubio. He was able to get the ball down to the one-yard line. And instead of, you know, typically that ball would just bounce into the end zone, and he puts some English on it, some backspin, and it, it bounced back into the field of play and so and died there at about the two. And what a perfect golf shot it would have right, been. You exactly. know, you just landed about two feet from the goal, the hole, and it just, just sits right there. So there we have a holding penalty called on Carter Truscott. What a coincidence. We met his grandfather, Castle Truscott, right before this ball game started. And the penalty is costly. It takes it all the way back to the four. Yeah, Carter was in a tough spot there where he was blocking out. And then the runner, Hodges, kind of ran to where the defender was. So it, it puts the blocker in a tough position when uh, puts the blocker in a tough position whenever you're, you're thinking they're going to go one way and they go the other. Now here is Dulles' offense without wide receivers. And they hand the ball up the middle. It looks like it's Jalen Brown carrying the football over right guard. And James, I've been wishing that you could be with me to kind of tell our audience the best description of the kind of offense that Dulles runs. But hold on, I think we're going to have a penalty here. Okay, well, that'll help the Vikings. So what kind of, how do you describe the offense that the Vikings run now under head coach Shane Bird? This is called the wing tee. The name of this offense is the wing tee. It's a, it's a run-heavy offense that, that capitalizes on uh, uh, misdirection a lot and ball, and ball handling and fakes to try to get the defense off, off guard. And they run downhill is the way that Shane Bird describes it. The quarterback is Mark Tisdell. He has one back right behind him, but I'm afraid they didn't get that play underway in time. And that might... Yeah, that's a false start against Dulles, and it won't... It'll be a half the distance penalty, so I guess it'll take it right back to about the four yard line. Kind of confused what they're waiting on. Yeah, I kind of wonder myself. You got the you got the off uh, you know the offside on first down. You got first and five. Like let's run downhill. You know, 
So I don't know what they were, what the, what the confusion was. You know, we mentioned that Ridgepoint game that we had earlier with Elkins, but there's more to tell our audience about the District 26A race. Okay, so Ridgepoint wins a shortened game against Elkins. They have improved to 5-0 and in District 26A. So they are basically alone at first place at the moment, but maybe not for the reason you think. Now here we go. Pistol formation. Tisdell turns around and gives it off, and that's a nice gain over left tackle as he handed it off to Jarrett Mitchell. Now Jarrett Mitchell has been... No, I'm sorry. It, it wasn't Jarrett Mitchell. It was Jalen Brown who had carried on the first play. Jarrett Mitchell and Mark Tisdell have been sharing the quarterbacking duties. And so here we have a second down and three yards to go as the ball is at the 11-yard line. And Dulles, the kind of offense that they have run, they've been able to drive the ball a little, but it's a tall order for them to drive more than 90 yards. There's a handoff, and it's Devin Graham, last year's leading rusher, and a flag comes in as he only gains... <laughs> One yard. I wonder what this could be. Could be another offside penalty. Maybe lined up in the neutral zone there. This I, game. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please go ahead. This game is going to sound different to everybody because the bands aren't here. There were so many delays that they sent a lot of the support people home. And you heard the Star Spangled Banner at the very beginning. We we just started with that because we didn't really know exactly what order they were going to do things in. But uh, no bands at halftime. I guess halftime is going to be kind of short. That's a good thing. As we're already delayed. So I think yeah, that's right yeah, it's way. It's going to be past our bedtime when this this game is over. And Tisdell hands it off and hit in the backfield is Jackson Tilly. He's dropped for a loss of three. So after the Vikings pick up that first down. They end up with a loss of three on first down, and now it's second down and 13 from their own 13. Jackson, go ahead. Oh, Kevin Mejia had a nice block there, number 62. And he actually saw him motioning over to the uh, to the coaches, like, hey, run it behind me. Yes, and Thomason Olarun Femi, a sophomore linebacker here on the right side, made the tackle there. Yeah. And I know how to say his name because I teach with his mom. Very cool. At Mata Intermediate in Aleaf. So here we go, second down and 13. Tisdell, shotgun snap, fakes the handoff, rolls to the right, looking down the field, getting near the sideline, flings it, and it is caught! There is Antwi, he's got it, and he's on the run across midfield, and takes it inside the 45 to the 43. Correction, not Antwi number zero, it's Joshua Bailey. And in the games that we've broadcasted, Kovo, Joshua Bailey has not been targeted or carried the football so he's getting involved in the offense and that's a huge gain I love what Dulles is doing you know it's different and I, I think it's, it's making Travis out of sorts and Travis typically plays a 3-4 defense and they're, 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 they're running like a four down front now they're just they're changing their defense their base defense to try to adapt to this run heavy offense and I think it's it's costing them a little bit a little, a little unfamiliar right now we're three minutes into the game. Tisdell rolls to his right, throws quickly. Got a completion to Jackson Tilly. Tilly, Tilly, that's a gain of four yards. And a little bit of pushing and shoving as the tackle was made out there by Israel Lobby. And maybe we'll see those two kind of, yeah. you know, playing the game within the game throughout that, tonight's action. That would have been a taunting penalty in the NFL. Yeah. Because the defender stood over the, over the ball carrier. I, I hate that rule. I am so against that rule. And uh, it really upsets me every time I see a call because it's impacting games. Second down and six. Tisdell tosses to Jalen Brown, gets outside the numbers, but that time the Travis Tigers are waiting for him. Stringing it out, Parker Reed slams him to the turf, a loss of one, and it'll be third and seven. And one last thought on that. I hate the hypocrisy of it that if a defender makes a nice tackle and stands over you, it, it, you know, that's, that, that's, a, oh, that's taunting. But when a receiver catches the ball for a first down, he can flip the ball and make a big first down sign and dance in front of you, and that's not taunting. So it's, it's a, it, to me it's a completely one-sided skewed to penalize defensive players, which I hate that. Okay. I know you are rooted in defense. <laughs> that's got to be the reason. <laughs> Tisdell turns around, tosses to Brown, and heavy traffic gets about three, but that's it. Hit deep in the backfield. 
Kendrick Taylor makes the stop and with a fourth down and five situation coming up, I think if you're the Dulles Vikings, you have not yet won a district game and you are in Travis territory at the 38, why not go for it? Yeah, that's what it looks like they're set to do, Roger. Carter Truscott comes in and that is our Nick's Italian Restaurant family connection. We met his grandfather, Castle Truscott, and Carter Truscott is lined up on the left side of the formation. Now he has company, but first we have a timeout. We'll step aside and be back. This is VibeFortBend.com. First Iron Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tyron Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTyronAuto.com. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in-store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max, and OfficeDepot.com. By the way, on that family connection, Carter Truscott and his grandfather, Castle Truscott, I forgot to say the important thing. At Nick's Italian Restaurant, their family gets bigger every time you stop by. It's on FM 1464. In Sugar Land, just a few hundred feet north of Austin High School. It's real close to Travis, too. Here we go. Fourth down and five. Dulles called the timeout. Let's see what they dial up. Tisdale dropping back, throwing, uh, throwing over the middle. Intended for Truscott. It's incomplete right there on defense. Dominic Njoku. And there is yet another family connection. Dominic Njoku, an ace defensive player in the secondary for Travis and his brother Anthony, his twin brother Anthony. He is the quarterback, and now it is Travis taking over at their own 38-yard line. That's a great first drive, though. You know, started at the two-yard line. You know, so if you're Dulles, I mean, I, I think you can definitely, of course, you wanted more, but that, that, that is nothing to hang your head about after that drive. Yeah, they really did flip the field. Four receivers, three on the right, one on the left, and Njoku throws quickly. He's got Gabriel Van Wick near the far <laughs> sideline. That's a 12-yard gain. Jalen Brown wrestled him out. Jackson Tilly also there, Tilly Tilly. <laughs> and uh, by the way, he was a homecoming king for Dulles. And they've got it at midfield, first and 10. And Joku looks at those, the trio of receivers on his right and throws that way to Drew Sissom, son of the head coach. Short gain, a little comeback route. Garrett, uh, Jarrett Mitchell dropped him. Two yard pickup and it's second and eight. I always like to say that the term, you know, for the boxing term, that styles make fights. Yeah. I just love th this is a contrast in styles. <laughs> They're complete polar opposites in their offensive uh, strategy here. Yeah. Travis throws the ball short to function as their running game, but sometimes they run it, and when they do, it's usually Jamison Singletary who just carried the football right there, a three-yard pickup before he's shoved back by a big group of Vikings, and now it's third down and five. Big difference is the tempo, too. Uh, Travis is no huddle, gets right back up to the line where Dulles huddles and you know, runs down the play clock each and every play. Yeah, Travis could have a lot more snaps, but the time of possession could be the same. Looks like Dulles jumped, and Joku throws it near sideline, looking for Van Wick, and he caught it in heavy traffic, and he's got it at the 15 and bumped out. Alfred Antwi and Jarrett Mitchell were right there. Somehow the ball found its way into the arms of Gabriel Van Wick. There was no flag. I thought we were going to get one. But if there was one for offside, Travis would decline it anyway. Right. Great throw, great catch. <laughs> Seriously. I had uh, Antwi running with him and the safety coming over the top and delivered a big hit as soon as uh, Van Wick caught it. He still held on. Every play but one has been a pass. And Njoku going to throw it again there. And Singletary right down the seam between the sideline and the numbers on this side. And into the end zone he goes from 15 yards out. Travis is on the board, 6 to nothing. Yeah, so right there, Dulles sent the blitz. They blitzed two linebackers. And the problem is, I think one of the guys who's supposed to have the back blitzed. 
And so th there was not communication on who was going to take the back in the replacement of the blitzing linebacker. And so a wide open touchdown there for Jamison Singletary. And Anthony Njoku has seen that kind of thing plenty, and he knew exactly where to go with it. And Singletary, fortunately for Travis, was looking back for the ball. Antonio Rubio with Drew Sissom to hold out of the snap from Sam Kinnick. And it's up and good. Seven to nothing. Travis on top. 5.02 to go in the first quarter. This is VibeFortBend.com. When everything works together, it's a beautiful thing. With Xfinity, you get Wi-Fi faster than a gig to power a house full of devices. So your home becomes a symphony of activity. <clears throat> we start with Dad streaming cooking videos in the kitchen. Add a little gaming in the basement. Gorgeous. Now let's bring in some working from the couch. And finally, the sweet melody of Grandpa streaming his nature shows. Can your internet do that? And there goes Grandpa. Power a house full of connected devices. Learn more about Wi-Fi speed faster than a gig and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay and 12 31 21. Restrictions apply. New connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Okay, so we got uh, Dulles cheerleaders making some joyful noises over here, but no bands, no dance teams. And I'm looking over at the Travis side. I don't think their cheerleaders are here. Seven to nothing and Antonio Rubio striding toward the football. It's in the air. And this is going to come down short of the goal line and Cole Hodges will bring it back from the 10 yard line. Coming to the near side and turns it up and gets to the 22. Ideal open field tackle from Carmelo Ratliff, who is a freshman. Xfinity is the future of awesome, and we believe that freshman Carmelo Ratliff has an awesome future. He does some running back. He's on all the special teams. He's going to be something special and probably the heir apparent to Jamison Singletary as the feature running back. Yeah, you probably know better than me. I don't know if it was Fielding Yost or Pop Warner or who invented the forward pass, but... Uh biggest invention after that I think is the shotgun snap and I'll talk about that in a second I used to know that and I forgot it and now there's a toss sweep kind of a sweep it's uh, one of those where it looks like it's going to be a toss sweep but then they kind of head up between the tackles a little bit and the carrier on that play was Diedrich Hubbard he's a sophomore he also has some great potential as a young running back and that's a four-yard pickup, second and six. Yeah, I like the pace Dulles goes at, so we have time to talk in between plays. But, uh, yeah, I was just thinking about that on that pass. You're talking about the blitz came, and Yoku, was just, he's had so much experience, he could easily handle it, get the ball out in time. Like, that's, that, 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 that's a result of the shotgun snap. That's what allows him the time and the vision to be able to see that blitz coming so easily. Now they hand it off up the middle. And in heavy traffic, the scrum of bodies moves forward for four yards. And Dulles will have a very manageable third and two as in the middle of that mass of humanity, we see Terrell Potter, another sophomore running back carrying it. Football is so cyclical. I remember when I was in high school, I graduated in 2002, the Dulles Vikings ran the wing tee. Uh, Jim Creech, the longtime coach, you know, was their coach at the time. And now here we are in 2021 and they're back to it. Third down and two. And all but one of the Dulles players are in a formation that's no more than about seven yards wide. But wait a minute, before that play gets underway, there's a flag down. What do you think it is? Probably a false start. That's, that, that, yeah, so the false start. Teams like this that, that are going to be so run heavy, they can't afford these kinds of penalties because like a Navy, say, in college football ranks. Like they're just trying to get three, three yards every play and then barely get the first down on third, third, you know what I mean? Just yeah. keep moving the chains. So and when, when you get into a third and eight, they're not really built uh, for the, to convert these kinds of situations. I think a Travis offense stays on schedule by getting the first down within two plays. Dulles thinks we may need three. Mm -hmm. Third down and seven, toss to Cole Hodges, tripped up in the backfield. What a tackle. 
Oh, that was a beauty, a form tackle by Lake Washington. And that'll force a punt situation for the Vikings. And Kovo, you haven't seen Dulles this year. This is what we've seen pretty pretty often. They will they'll gain a first down or, or two, and they can't seem to sustain the possession. They did have a very good possession the first time as they took it from their four all the way into Travis territory. Now it is Brady Ultramari to punt it away. Good rush by Travis, but Ultramari does get it underway. And a nice wow. bounce. Boy, this is going to be a very effective punt. Rolls inside the 30, all the way down to the 27. I just feel like Dulles is struggling when they try to get the ball on the outside. Travis is doing a good job getting up the field, holding the edge. And so it's been big losses every time Dulles is trying to go outside. I think they need to keep, keep the ball on the inside. 51-yard punt by Ultramari with no return, and the Travis offense goes back out there. They look like Ohio State in road uniforms. Mm -hmm. Scarlet pants, white jerseys with dark gray numerals outlined in red and the silver helmets. And Joku going to run it, taking around the left side. Tries to turn it up near the numbers, but Dominic Williams, who has really shown out despite the fact that Dulles has had a tough time finding the win column in the month of October, he's just been making big plays. And you'll see big number 66. They don't give heights on the Dulles roster, but he looks to me like he's at least 6'3". And growing. See, he's the right defensive end. That was a two-yard loss. And Joku stands strong, plenty of time to throw. Now moves to his right so he can see the field better. He's got one man to avoid. He's going to turn it up the field and take it near the 35-yard line. So that'll set up a third and two yards to go. I think that was Jeff Ohakawa who made the tackle for the Vikes. Travis not playing with quite the tempo that they did on that first possession. Will Anjoku throw it on third and two? I think he got him on the hard count. I think someone from Dulles jumped. By the way, you want to know the temperature, Kovo, or would you just as soon not know? No, I would like to know, actually. Okay, let's see here. In Missouri City, Texas, right now it is 70 degrees. Here we go. Not looks like bad. looks like the wind is kind of blowing from the other side of the field straight into our faces. So blowing from left to right for the Travis offense. Travis is three and one in their district games. So they're in good position. They have Ridge Point in the final game of the year. There is a running play to the right. Carmelo Ratliff carrying. Picked up about three and very, very crowded conditions. Kind of hard to tell who made the tackle. It was definitely a team effort. Maxwell Cotton coming out of there. I think he should get credited with the tackle. Yeah, we're already, already under 45 seconds left to go in the first quarter. It's been a fast quarter. Yeah, I guess um, we started late, so I guess we do need to kind of speed things up, right? There goes Ratliff in motion, and Joku play fake, throws it to Ratliff, and he's hit hard. He didn't catch the football anyway, but Alfred Antwi kind of put his shoulder into his hip. I think he might have knocked the wind out of young Carmelo Ratliff, and the Dulles Vikings are fired up, and uh, this just in. Football's a violent game. It happens. I think Carmelo's going to be okay, but it is scary when you get the wind knocked out of you. Yeah, that was a great job there uh, by Antwi. Just totally recognized the bubble all the way. Receiver unable to make the block. And I mean, yeah, totally legal hit, you know. Uh, but he just came out firing uh, like a missile. Uh, kind of got his shoulder. Looked like into the hip area, uh, you know, the receiver there. So I, I think that's going to definitely be, at the very least, that's going to be a hip contusion, Ooh, which are extremely yeah. painful. Uh, but I, I'm hoping avoiding serious injury, but that is going to be a painful contusion most likely. Kind of like uh, Luke Cafferty got in the television show Friday Night Lights. You remember when I he had that hip injury, <laughs> and he was playing uh, not for not for uh, all of a sudden Dylan, but for Dylan East. Yep. And so he hid that injury, and uh, it was uh, 
I, I really like that actor. I can't remember his name. I remember he liked Becky Sproles. Yes, he did. I don't think uh, she liked him back, though, right? Well, no. <laughs> not not the way that uh, he had hoped for. Burned love. All right. Well, Carmelo Ratliff is, is up, and he's yeah, walking kind of carefully, and it looks like that contusion will be on the right hip, which in this case was kind of the outside hip. He started on the left side of the formation, went behind the quarterback. They swung the ball out there, and Alfred Antwi was just uh, ready to make a big hit. And that kind of slowed things down. You noted right before the play that we were in the final minute of the first quarter. We're at 19 and 2 tenths seconds to go. And we have third down and six for Travis. They have the ball at their own 43. Far hash mark. And Travis trying to move the ball from left to right. Play clock is at 15. Players moving around, and now we have a whistle. Did Travis take a timeout? What's going on here? Perhaps. The wind is so strong you can't even hear the announcement. Yeah, uh, there's, you know, the bond issue that the voters passed. I think, I think it's a clock issue. It's like no, no well, penalty clock issue. Okay, yep. all right. I was going to say the audio issue. Uh, I, there it is again. <laughs> you know, the bond I, issue that the Fort Bend voters passed a couple of years ago, hopefully we'll be able to improve the sound uh, when the referee tries to tell the crowd what the penalty was. Yeah, some of that could be the faulty sound system, but then part of it is, uh, I think, the, the stiff wind on the field. Yeah. We're kind of getting some of that feedback, but you're right. It's very difficult to hear. All right, third down and six. Dulles looked like they wanted to blitz, backed out of it. Quick throw over the middle. Drew Sisson makes the catch. Slanting from the left side correction oh, is Gabriel Van Wick, and it's a first down with 12 seconds to go. The clock stops while they move the change. Chains, sorry. And now the clock is running again. Will Travis get another play underway? The clock is at two, and they snap it just wow. in time. And Njoku running to the right, trying to get to the edge. Stiff arms a man as he goes out of bounds and picks up maybe one. I think that's all he got. Jeff Ohakawa on the tackle, and that's how the first quarter ends. Travis leads it 7-0. This is VipeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. We start the second quarter. Travis only got one yard on first down at second and nine, and Joku hands it off, and then it's a flea flicker right back to him, and he throws to a wide open receiver at the two yard line. And walking in for a touchdown is Robert Sims. And on the first play of the second quarter, Travis throws a touchdown pass that takes them all the way. Was that a 43 yarder, Kovo? I'm yes, sorry, I didn't so. take I, note. I, I don't know exactly, but yeah, somewhere thereabouts. So that's an Archer Volkswagen touchdown scoring drive, and it takes two plays. See, yeah, you saw you saw Dulles get the big hit on the bubble, so their yeah. their DBs are playing aggressively. So that was a great idea with the flea flicker to make them pay for the aggressiveness. There you go. See, that's why I need you here. <laughs> Can you be in two places at one time? Can you be in Aldine and here at the <laughs> same time? Yeah, maybe I can do like a Zoom broadcast. <laughs> I, think, I think that's an idea whose time has come. Right. And it is 14 to nothing after Rubio hits the extra point. We'll return on VibeFortBend.com. 14 nothing Tigers on top of the Vikings. 
First Tire and Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Okay, listeners, uh, grab a pencil and paper or a pen and paper. You're going to need to write some stuff down to make sense of the District 26A standings. While Rubio steps back and prepares to kick off, 14 to nothing. Dulles Vikings are trailing, and they will be moving left to right in the second quarter. And Rubio gets his foot into it. Cole Hodges chases the ball. It bounces off of him and goes out of bounds. Oh, that's a disastrous Yikes. mistake because it goes out at the one yard line. Oh my goodness, they're gonna be 99 yards away from the opposite goal line, the one they wanna find. <laughs> well, the last time that they started at their own two yard line was their best drive of the game. So maybe there's some kind of backwards logic where that's gonna help them, but no, I don't think so. I mean, it's really tough. So the good news is in their style of offense, they're already under the center. They're, they're, I, I would, I feel like they're designed to get out of this hole and at least get a couple yards and give mm -hmm. themselves some space to operate with kind of looks like is it rugby or australian rules football where you got a bunch of guys who are kind of scrum bent at the waist and yeah. kind of arm in arm and rugby. big old scrum <laughs> travis would really like to get some penetration here and drop him for a safety there's a run over the left side and it accomplished what you're talking about just kind of burrowing forward getting what they can deep inside all those players who was that it was devin graham the Vikings wearing navy blue pants and jerseys, as well as red helmets with the horn logo on either side. They picked up three yards out to the four yard line. It's second down and seven. Tisdell turns around a little toss sweep and they get something out of this. It's a big gainer, big, big gainer. There is Jalen Brown gets across the 40 to the 45. And he's run down from behind. Israel Akinlabi saving a touchdown. Man. Now that is the biggest gain, Kovo, that I have witnessed from scrimmage by Dulles all year long. I was just going to say that Travis has everybody at the line of scrimmage. You know, so I was going to say, I mean, they're overloading the box. If you can pop one, it could go a long ways. And sure enough, there you go. You got the big play. 41 yards on that run. Tisdale hands it off. And Devin Graham is hit at the line of scrimmage. Can't go anywhere on that one. Travis was ready with Parker Reed. Okay, so today Ridgepoint doesn't have to play a full game, but they get credit for a 5-0 district record. The game was stopped because of lightning delays with a 27-7 lead over uh, the Elkins Knights. The Bush Broncos started their game with George Ranch here during the afternoon. And Bush took a 7-0 fourth quarter lead, a first quarter lead. But then they had to stop that game and couldn't finish it. And they yeah. will have to finish it, and they will do that Monday night at 6 p.m. At least that's what I was told by the Bush coaches. So Bush will try to improve to 5-0 and and you take know, the field here at Hall. You know, timeout taken by Dulles. And I guess if we have a second, if, I don't Yeah, know. let's keep talking about I, it. I, I have a little bit of problem with that, too. And I've, I've been a little feisty tonight. Um, the fact that... You know, both teams are playing a Saturday afternoon game, right? Right. Starting at the same time. Well, the, the Ridgepoint gets to have their game canceled, even though it didn't make it past halftime. Yeah. Whereas uh, Bush is having their game rescheduled to Monday. So here's the deal. Bush and Ridgepoint are supposed to play each other on Thursday. You see what I'm saying? So to me, it's, it's creating, and I, obviously I'm a very pro Ridgepoint guy, but it's definitely creating a very big competitive advantage for Ridgepoint here. That yeah. now they're done for the weekend. They can start preparing and re recuperating for the, this huge game against Bush. And Bush has to go play another football game on Monday. Yeah, now that really does seem kind of crazy. And there you go. You are correct. Thursday, Ridgepoint at Bush at Rhodes Stadium in Katy. So not only a quick turnaround, but they have to make basically a road trip. And we're planning on being at that game because it's a huge one. 
in District 26A. And that one's a big advantage for Bush. Obviously, Bush much closer to Katie than Ridgepoint. That, that's a haul all the way across town. And Travis is 3-1 and one going into this game, trying to get the victory over Dulles and stay one game behind Ridgepoint and or Bush. Second down and 10. Tisdale play fake, rolls to his right. Here comes the rush, gets rid of it. And the pass is intercepted by Travis at their 36-yard line. I like that kid. That was Matt Bennett who ben got right in front of the receiver and locked it up. Bennett's the guy that made the touchdown saving tackle. He made a big hit earlier. He just got the interception. I mean, I don't know. I, I've been impressed by him. I, I've he's come. He's a, stood out to me a couple times already tonight. Well, by the way, thank you for telling me that because I incorrectly gave Israel Akin Lobby the uh, credit for the touchdown saving tackle. So. So it is Matt Bennett. He might have a big brother who played baseball for Travis, but Travis is a big school, so I can't assume that. First and 10 from the 36, and it is a give to Sims, who already caught the long touchdown pass, and he heads to his left and heads up the field, picks up six, and it's going to be second down and four. <laughs> I, I like number 17 as well, Jackson Tilly. He's, he's out there, like, command, you know, uh, leading his teammates, communicating, trying yeah. to lift him up. I mean, he's a very vocal leader. He plays hard every day, and, yes, he's definitely. <laughs> and there he is making a tackle for loss on a quick pass as Njoku thought he could get it to Gabriel Van Wick and get something out of it, but Tilly Tilly, he was right there. Tilly Tilly indeed. Yeah, he's, uh, it's impressive. I guess that's kind of an outdated reference, and it's uh, – Probably in a general direction the UIL doesn't want me right. to go, so I I'm going to stop saying it. Yeah. Third down and six after that one-yard loss. And Joku claps his hands together, drops back, stands strong, pumps once, throws, and he's got the completion to Van Wick. That will be a first down for Travis. Yes, it's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. Justin Ofoma on the tackle for the Vikes. Van Wick is a good, solid receiver. I mean, he's made several catches tonight. With, uh, very sure hands, good routes. He's alone on the left side of the formation. Three receivers on the right. And Joku faked like he was going to pass and then ran straight up the middle and running tough. He is dragged down from behind. Anthony Garza made that tackle, but not before. It was an eight-yard pickup. I love how fast. Look, look at the receivers for Travis. How they hustle to get set. Like, I... Great effort by the receiving core. Yeah, they always want to catch them moving on defense. Pumping short, looking deep, can't find anyone. Safety valve to Sims near sideline, breaks the tackle, still going. Gets inside the 45 to the 42 before he's hit by, guess who, Jackson Tilly and Alfred well, Entwi also there along with Khalil Boyd. You remember uh, Steven Sims? Oh, yes. He's play, because, playing for the Washington football team. Yeah, I wonder, is there a... That might be something for you to look into. Is, is there a relation of the Sims on, on this year's Travis? Yes, I, I checked with someone who wasn't 100% sure but believes that they're cousins. Very cool. Another family connection. Nick's Italian restaurant. Their <laughs> family gets bigger every time you stop by. <laughs> First down and 10 from the 43 up the middle. Singletary hitting it hard. Slipped a couple of tackles right near the line of scrimmage and kept on going. That's a good positive play. Of I think he got five yards on first down. Yep, right there. Betwixt the sticks. Under seven minutes to go in the first half. Travis leading 14 to nothing. Two touchdown passes by Njoku. One to Jamison Singletary. The other one went to Sims on second and five. Njoku drops back. They give him plenty of time to throw. Deep post and just out of the reach of Sims. Made a diving attempt, and you notice, Kovo, that back in the day, you know, dark ages when I was playing high school football, they always said two hands every time. But so many of these young players have seen guys in the NFL reach out with one hand and kind of pull it in like Spider-Man, and they're trying to do that. It actually kind of makes sense because you can reach farther with one arm than you can with two. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, and I think in that situation, yeah, th there's no way he could have gotten to it. But, yeah, like in other situations, when the ball's coming right at you, you definitely want to use two hands to secure the football. Third down and five, quick release. Far sideline, right at the marker. 
catch made by a guy who's not on my roster. That's a shame. Yeah, good good throw there. The ball was all the way on the left hash. He threw that all the way across the field. And it, you know, the winds, like you mentioned, are swirling around Hall Stadium tonight. So I'm going to go for it on fourth, Roger. Okay. Well, the, the receiver who made that last catch was number 12. I'll get his name, hopefully, from Travis' assistant coaches when they go down to talk to the team in the locker room at halftime. Underneath center is Njoku. Kovo's play, uh, favorite play, the quarterback sneak, and it's Love good it. for a first down. He Love needed it. one, he got two. You know, sometimes people, you know, say, oh, we, we don't take, we don't go under the center at all. We're 100% shotgun. But there you go. There's a team that's 100% shotgun. They went under the center, they got it on the quarterback sneak. So it definitely can be done. Yeah, and sometimes it's just more useful to put your quarterback under center. There's no rule against it, you know. And Njoku drops back. They protect him perfectly again. Over the middle, I think that pass might have been either tipped at the line or it slipped out of his hand, but it was over everybody and fell incomplete. Good job there by Jackson Tilly on the underneath coverage to get enough depth, you know, that Yoku could feel, the, the, feel his presence and kind of had to put a little more height on that ball so he overthrew it. By the way, I am pronouncing the quarterback's name the way Coach Sissom says yeah, and how is that? I, he I mean, says uh, Njoku, Njoku sorry. but, uh, yeah. you know, if you asked Anthony, he might say Njoku. Sometimes coaches don't know how sure. to say their players' names. And there goes Sims, a little shovel pass to him. He went to the right near the numbers. He turned it up, and it'll set up a makeable situation on third down and four. Of course, I guess with Travis, they always seem to have that high-powered offense, and almost any situation is makeable for him on third down. Yeah, although this, this, this iteration this year, it seems a little bit slower paced to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they're 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 not going as fast consistently as they that they have in past years. And Joku on third and a long four, again gets good protection. Throws to the t oh near the goal line. Sims just dropped it right there at the one yard line. He'd had his man beaten. That would have been a touchdown. And now it might be Antonio Rubio time. He is capable of kicking a field goal from 44 yards out which is what it would be if they kicked it, but it looks like they're gonna go for it. Sims has gotta be upset with himself. Maybe they'll go his way again. There's the snap and Joku throws and he's got a completion at the 20 yard line. Is that enough? Yes, it is. It's a first down on the first pass that they delivered to John Okoguale. As you see, the PA guy and I both pronounced saying Okuguali. By the way, you hear the Dulles cheerleaders in the background and as far as the other groups that come to the stadium during a football game, they, they are all we have tonight. Give to Singletary up the middle. He picks up four and there was a player for Dulles that read it like a book. Dasan Thomas, the junior defensive end, brings him down, and it's a gain of three, second and seven. This quarter's going fast, Kovo. Yep. Four minutes to go. There's a fake to Singletary. Throw over on the right side to Okuguali. He picks up a couple of yards, but that's hey, it. Is that, is that our family connection? What are we? Okuguali? No, uh, is that a Castle Truscott? Yes, I or believe. Carson Truscott? Well, let Carter Truscott uh, Carter is Truscott. number 13, so yes. There it is. Carter Truscott and his grandfather, Castle, who visited with us before the game. That's the family connection. Nick's Italian Restaurant, their family gets bigger every time you stop by. Travis, folks, go to Nick's. It's real close to your neighborhood, and they support us. Go by and tell them you like VipeFortBend.com, and you will like pretty much everything on their menu. And now there are whistles. We have a false start potentially on the right tackle. Okay, so to round out what I was saying about the, yes, it is a false start. So Travis, if they win tonight, improves to four and one, they'll be a game out of first place. But Bush, if they win the completion of today's game, when they resume it on Monday, they would be five and zero oh along with Ridgepoint. Clements is at three and two. They beat Austin on Friday night. And it'll be Clements against Bush, a critical game next week. Week after. Week after, you're right, sorry about that. Okay, Joku <laughs> throws, Van Wick has it. 
And he has the first down by a yard. Antwi grabs his foot, pulls him down, but not before he moves the sticks. That's a first down. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. And it's just outside the 10-yard line where they mark him, so it's not first and goal. And Joku running to the left, gets to the edge, has to make a turn, and that was... Uh, Actually, I said he gets to the edge. He really didn't. I spoke too soon because of the play of Taji Wilson, who kind of set the edge, turned him back in, and it's a gain of only two. Wow. We're just we're not going to get all our commercials in, Kovo. We're down to under two and a half minutes to go. Travis, they don't usually try to shorten the game. Looks like they are this time. Roll out to the right, and Joku looking end zone. He's going to pull it down and run. Here is a late flag, and he goes out of bounds near the four-yard line. Carter Truscott pushed him out, but I think we might see holding. Yep. And this time, it might be Singletary, the running back, rather than the offensive lineman yes. who usually gets yep. fingered for that. Wynn picking up. By the way, folks, uh, if you need really good Wi-Fi in your home and you're wondering, can I afford the best kind of Wi-Fi? Well, we might have the answer to your problem. And we're going to visit with Bryce Kennard of Xfinity. And he's going to tell us about something that you might want to sign up for. Because what if you have multiple people, both school kids as well as adults, who need to do work with inside, inside the house? You need that bandwidth. You can't have, have it dropping out on you. So we'll talk about that at halftime with Bryce Kennard. On second down and long, and Joku steps up in the pocket, throws late over the middle, incomplete, intended for Sissom, and he was well covered. Is that, uh, is that Antwi? It might be, it's either zero or eight. It's either Alfred Antwi or Jeff Ohakawa. So it's third down, it looks like 19 to go. And now that the wind is picking up, I'm thinking it will be a difficult chore if Rubio has to try a field goal. Let's say this pass is thrown incomplete. Njoku has other ideas, stands strong, throws over the middle. And he's got the completion inside the five. It won't be a first down, but it'll put him close. And I think because they went for it before on the fourth down, they'll probably do it again. I think so too. I mean, you got the really good kicker, obviously, uh, with Rubio. I, I feel like he's been here for five, six years. Yeah, well, Sergio was his uh, big that's brother. Part, that's what. That's, that's another it. Nick's Italian restaurant family go. connection. The great Sergio Rubio and his just about as good and probably will exceed him, Antonio Gee. Rubio. I'll, I'll let you finish this play, then I have a question for you. All right, fourth down and three. Travis is going for it. And Joku rolling to his left, looks in the end zone, and the pass is tipped away. Incomplete. And that's Carter Truscott. How about that? So what a pick-me-up for the Dulles Vikings. Their defense holds Travis on fourth down inside the five. And there you go. The Vikings are hanging in there. They're only down 14 to nothing. Do you ever broadcast uh, softball games or just baseball? Yeah, we do some softball, and as a matter of fact, Travis has a girl I who's going to be a gonna junior. Bring that she is Ariel Kowalewski. She spells her name just like yours, but yeah. pronounces it Kowalewski, and I love her nickname, Ariel Kowalewski, AK-47. Oh, that's brilliant. That yeah. Is, she can, when she gets to college, she will cash in on NIL. Oh, yeah. Because that's great. She is something, and... Uh, Love to watch her play, and they had a pretty good playoff run. Uh-oh, Tisdale drops the snap. He has to chase the ball back. It's loose. If Travis jumps on it, it's a touchdown, but instead it is a safety. Someone for Dulles saved the day and saved them six points, if not seven, and it was Jalen Brown who jumped on it, and that's not, uh, that snap just kind of came in there hot, and yeah. Tisdale looked like like he wasn't totally ready for it. And that ups the ante. It's now 16 to nothing, Travis leads on the safety. And they'll get the football right back. I was going to say this. So that is not a Knicks Italian family connection. Uh, you, would, you would think so. Like as, as rare as our name is, to see another one, I'm sure when you first saw that, you, you're probably thinking it's got to be related. But uh, 
no relation, which is pretty crazy because also that's the same part of town that we're from. You know, as you know, my brother went to Travis. I uh, graduated 2012, so. And Katie Kilgore leads the softball program at Travis, yep. and uh, she is no relation to the former AD of Fort Bend ISD, Keith Kilgore. Right, yeah, <laughs> Nick's family connection. No, no family not. connection yeah. there. And she, she, she graduated the same year as my brother in 2012 because I know that they were, they were like middle school classmates of Sartarsha, and then, you know, with the zoning split, my brother living on the west side of New Territory, he went to Travis, and she kept on to Austin. So, Okay, I got a question for you, Kovo. Yep. Sometimes after a safety, teams punt the ball from the 20. Sometimes they tee it up and kick it. What's the advantage either way? And it looks like yeah. Ultramari is going to punt it. I think it's a preference thing, depending on do you have do you have a better puncher or wind well, really picked up. There. Yeah, it's uh, he punted it toward us, and it looks like the wind is kind of blowing across the field. And I think he just didn't want it to end up in the hands of Dominic and Joku. But yeah, that's that, that's the difference. It's a preference. If you have a better kickoff man or a, a better punter. Okay. Well, and and also sometimes it's a matter of hang time. You know. Yeah, I guess if you're trying to limit a return, you punt it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, sometimes on a team, every once in a while, you just it's clear who the best player is. Uh -huh. Ariel Kowalewski is the best <laughs> softball player that uh, Travis has. Now that one of her senior teammates from last year has graduated so uh i was reading the vibe for ben magazine because we had a, obviously we got here what around 3 three thirty or 4 from our prior games we had oh, hours man, to kill what a day it's been i was reading the vibe <laughs> for ben preview and there, there's like a, another kovaleski that runs on the cross country team maybe her younger sister perhaps so that might be a nick's family connection it i think very there's several, well could be uh, yeah. i guess they pronounce the kovaleskis uh out there we are given so many nick's italian restaurant family <laughs> connections <laughs> that the next time we go there we have to uh, charge them a, i a want a free fee, dessert right? <laughs> <laughs> actually they gave me one the last time i was there all right here is njoku play fake drops back steps up in the pocket and now he's going to run near sideline and a flag comes in at the end of the play as alfred antwi uh, doesn't quite knock him down, but does kind of knock him off balance, and we're under a minute to go. We'll see what the penalty is. Okay, offensive holding against the Tigers. We didn't get to do the usual pregame stuff because of all the bad weather and the lightning and so forth, and we don't know the, the referee's name. But I, I hope he and members of his crew didn't have uh, dates because uh, somebody's going to have to wait. All right, so after the penalty, it's first down and 20, and Joku throws near the sideline, got a completion, and that's Carmelo Ratliff and Jackson Tilly belts him. Yeah, a big hit by Tilly, and that was, that was a good, that was a clean hit, but that was like right on the edge. If it had been one more step, that would have been a late hit out of bounds. Second down and 13 yards to go for Travis. And normally, you know, in past years, we'd see Travis really be aggressive if they got the ball with about a minute left in the half. They're throwing short passes, and that pass is batted down at the line. And there's my man, Dominic Williams. Man, he's got, see, see the big frame, the long yeah. arms? I mean, it's easy for him to bat down passes. He doesn't even he, have to jump. He looks, it just looks unusual with his build to be number 66. Yeah. Like, what was that? Is that a Jack Lambert for the Steelers? Wasn't he like he 60? was 58. 58, okay. Was Jack Ham 67? Jack what? Ham was 59. No, I don't know where I'm getting the 66. See, I from. know these guys from 40 years ago, Yeah, <laughs> but I wouldn't do as well with the modern players. All right, so 45 seconds to go, and Joku on third and 13 steps up, and again he has his pass batted down by Dominic Williams, <laughs> and he is beating his chest. And go ahead, Dominic, you deserve it. Very, very impressive. And you know, Williams is playing a good game all night. He's kind of, he's built like Ted Hendricks, the mad stork, is what his nickname was back in the <laughs> 70s. War number 83, just, he wasn't big and beefy. I know who I was tall thinking. Tall and long armed. Not to interrupt you, Roger, but I figured out it's Ray Nitschke. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the guy there with no teeth for the Packers, <laughs> Lombardi's Packers. And so Travis has to punt on fourth and 13. Great snap. Antonio Rubio, that snap was by Sam Kinnick. 
And Truscott goes to a knee as he fair catches the football at the 19. I'll bet Covo with 30 seconds left. I don't know that the Vikings are going to try to do anything crazy. But then again, they may. They may. George Ranch. I doubt it, but they may. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm suddenly jumping from place to place with my thoughts. George Ranch playing Bush earlier today in the game they didn't finish. They're 2-2. Two and two. They are totally desperate to get a win to stay in the playoff picture. But Bush leads them 7 to nothing, and that is the game that will be resumed on Monday at 6. Tisdell rolling right. He does throw it, but it's incomplete, in and out of the hands of Cole Hodges, who was very close to the sideline. So I guess we got Monday night football, but it's high school football. <laughs> Bush and George Ranch resuming their game at 6 p.m. You're going head-to-head -head of Monday Night Football this week, Roger. Yeah, well, I figure it's two different audiences. You know, there's the Bush, George Ranch people. We're not going for people in Winnetonka, Minnesota. <laughs> We're going for the, the niche audience. And it'll just be a running play. Truscott, I think, is the one who has it. I may be wrong. But that's more than likely going to be the final play of the half as the clock is at 15. Whistles are blowing, and somebody did stop the clock. Yeah, Travis probably took time out. I wonder how long they're going to have for halftime. I was going to ask you the same thing. No bands. I, I wonder, is the halftime intermission, is, it, is, is, there, is some of it... Maybe we can ask the officials one day when we talk to them. Pre yeah, that's a good is, thing. Is, is there a prescribed amount that you have to have at halftime, you know, just by UIL rules for, like, player safety and recovery and whatnot? Or is, yeah. it, is it that we just have the halftime for the bands? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm. My guess, here's my guess, but it is a question that we should ask the officials. We should do that, Roger. Each season, write down a list of yes. questions. So many of them pop up, and, I, and then I, by the time I get to the officials, I've forgotten yeah. the question. Yeah, so. I, exactly. I'm the same way. So I'll bet there is a minimum that the UIL says you have to take for halftime. I'm sure it would be at least 10 minutes. And then the maximum is probably the 28 that we typically see. Right. All right, 15 seconds to go. Third down and seven to go for Dulles. They trail 16 to nothing. I think it said 14 to nothing a moment ago. But uh, Dulles... Let the spread formation snap get away from them the, in the end zone. So that's why it's 16 to nothing. I'm not sure what the delay is here. But I do see head coach Shane Bird talking to the headlinesman on the near side. All right, here we go. Let's play football already. Here we go. Tisdell under center sends a man in motion. That's Hubbard. And he gives it off up the middle. That's Truscott again. Correction, it's Devin Graham, short gain, moves the stick, stops the clock, and now they resume the clock moving. We're at eight seconds. Dulles is still in the huddle. That's going to be it. I love that play, though. We're basically that, That's when the wing tee is at its best, when you're really using the misdirection element of it. So basically they made everything look like it was going to be a, a toss to the outside. The quarterback did a great job faking the toss, and then as you're doing that fake, you just a little bit of sleight of hand hand it off inside to the fullback belly. So I think if they can, that's their best play. But if they can consistently get that kind of play going, knocking off four or five, maybe sometimes eight, nine yards, that's how they got a shot to get back in this game. And then maybe, in addition to making that play work, they could do what Travis did earlier in this quarter and, you know, hand it off. Guy, before he gets to the line of scrimmage, turns around, tosses it back to the quarterback. And Njoku threw the pass, and wasn't that the touchdown to Sims? Yeah. No, I agree. I agree with you. I I, I think I would have liked seeing taking a shot there, like with a trick play. All right. So I see that they're going to have a 15-minute halftime, so we'll step aside yep. real quick and be back with my friend Bryce Kennard on VipeFortBend.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. 
Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Welcome back to Halftime on VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School Sports. And it's a great opportunity here to talk to Bryce Kennard. He's with Comcast, the external affairs manager, and they have a great product that is so important to families these days called Internet Essentials. First of all, welcome in, Bryce. Thank you so much. It's good to, to be here. Well, you know... The world has changed so much in about a year and a half, and even though so many things are getting back to normal, and that includes school, you know, most every district is doing in-person school now in the state of Texas, but it is still critical for families to have good internet service. It's all about school assignments, work things that the adults in the home do. What does Internet Essentials make it possible for some people, you know, who might not have thought they could afford good Wi-Fi and internet? That's such a good question. So Comcast has been working in the digital equity space for more than 10 years. The Internet Essentials Program is part of our wraparound strategy to support students and households who maybe have not had internet for the first time at all. And so if, if you're looking to get a, an affordable option, the Internet Essentials is your best option. I will give you a couple of chances, in fact, probably several chances to, to say this, but is there a particular website or phone number that people should call when they hear you talking about Internet Essentials and they hear how great it is, where should they go if they are interested? Okay. So the Internet Essentials program has three pillars. There's the, the of course, of course the, the broadband connection. You've got access to purchase a laptop for a great price, oh. and you have access to free digital literacy training classes. And all anyone has to do to get connected is visit internetessentials.com. That's easy to remember, internetessentials.com. So let's talk about some anecdotal type things where it might have happened to you, it's probably happened to someone you know where maybe they just went through incredible stress because they weren't able to, I don't know, turn something in at the right time or they weren't able to get the proper quality of something. Uh, is there some kind of anecdotal thing you can describe where Internet Essentials could certainly come to the rescue and prevent that type of situation? Absolutely. Right now with the pandemic hopefully closing and coming to an end, but um, right now a, a lot of families are struggling to have a reliable um, Internet connection. And not just the student, but really the parents and anyone that's in the household. So if you've got um, bills to, to take care of, if you've got medical um, access, if records you're trying to access and upload, having a strong in-home connection is so valuable right now, and it's very important. All right, we're talking with Bryce Kennard. He's with Comcast, the external affairs manager, and he knows all about Internet essentials, and sometimes that having the right kind of Wi-Fi service and the right kind of connectivity in your home can be a cost situation. Well, until now. In fact, this is a great product. It's not brand new because um, Comcast introduced it uh, how long ago? About 10 years ago. We introduced the Internet Essentials Program really has a way to close the digital divide. We have been working with a number of school districts, a number of nonprofit organizations to make sure that there are no challenges when people are trying to get connected to the, inter to the Internet at home. Well, uh, you probably didn't know that I was going to do this, but I just want to ask you a couple of questions. So you are a Houston guy, which is something we love, Greater Houston. We're all very proud of it. And you went to Aldine Eisenhower. So what do you remember? I don't know whether you took part in athletics or were just a fan rooting for the teams that represented your school. What are a couple of memories for you? First of all, I love being a high school student in Houston. It's such a fantastic culture and shared kind of um, experience that we all 
love. I remember, of course, the football game, right? I remember the cheerleaders, I remember the football players, and I just remember, most importantly, the energy and all the excitement that I had from rooting for my hometown team, especially my, you know, I went to Eisenhower, but I rooted for all kind of Houston football teams, so that's still the same case today. Did you pull any pranks on anybody from a rival school? I would like to say that I did, in my head I did, but no, no physical pranks. <laughs> well, I can, I can tell you about something that didn't have anything to do with Aldine Eisenhower, but I went to McCullough, which became the Woodlands. You ever, you've heard of McCullough when it was McCullough? Yes, I have. Oh, and you're older than you look, I guess. <laughs> so, we were playing Klein on their homecoming game. We were in our first year as varsity, and at the time, this is how long ago it was, Klein was the only school in Klein ISD. Klein Oak hadn't even been, bit, uh, been built, and uh, Jim Parsons, who is an alum of Klein Oak, yeah, I, he must have been, I don't know, four or something know, at the time. <laughs> you do? Yeah, I know of Jim, of course, but yeah, I do. I, I you know, you know him personally? I know that name, and I know the personality. Oh, okay. You know how some people are just infamous? <laughs> yeah, I know. I got, I got kind of excited there because I thought you could maybe help me get a halftime interview with Jim Parsons, the Big Bang <laughs> Theory guy. Okay, but, but uh, never mind. Uh, unless you do meet him, uh, please give him my card. Anyway. <laughs> if I do, you know I've got you covered, buddy. Okay, we've kind of gone down a rabbit hole, but that's okay. We're visiting with Bryce Kennard of Comcast and he is the expert on internet essentials but the prank was some drafting students guys who wanted to be architects none of whom were football players broke into Klein Memorial Stadium which at the time had a grass field well they put on the field the most perfect Super Bowl quality logo because we were McCullough big M then in the middle a very small C and then a very large block C on the right and they made a logo on the field that went from 40-yard line to 40-yard line and hash mark to hash mark. It was perfect. And when dawn broke on that Friday morning when we were to play Klein that Friday night, uh-oh, they discovered there was a problem in the middle of the field, but they couldn't get rid of it. They couldn't hose it down. It would have become a swamp there at the 50-yard line in the middle of the field. So. We played Klein with our logo in the middle of their field, and they were pretty PO'd. I have to tell you, we lost 50 to 6. <laughs> that's one for the history books. Oh, that's fantastic. It's always um, nice to kind of um, experience and also kind of get to do some pranks, as long as they're fun. Okay, but you don't have one to top the one that I told about? No, I don't. That's, that's a pretty good one, actually. Well, thank you. But, and I'm, I'm kind of glad you don't uh, have one to top it because... Uh, this is, we're kind of running out of time. We're about to start the third quarter. So, Bryce Kennard, thank you so much for being with us. And we want people to know that Internet Essentials is a great option for them. It's not going to cost a lot because if, if people are at an economic disadvantage, that will certainly qualify them. And Comcast, being a great corporate citizen, is going to help them out. And one more time, give all the contact information, which doesn't take very long. It's really easy. For more information, visit internetessentials.com. All right. Thanks very much for being with us, Bryce. We appreciate it very much. And thank you so much for everything that Comcast does. They are our flagship sponsor. We, were able, we are able to bring more than 100 broadcasted games to the people in Fort Bend County. Thanks to your great support. And we know that you're reaching a lot of customers. So it's, it uh, benefits us, but we know it benefits you. Oh, thank you for that. We're happy to support you. All right, we'll be back and start the third quarter here on BikeFortBend.com. Thank you again, Bryce Kennard. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot, Office Max. Taking care of All right, we're back, but only for a couple of minutes. The thing is, we're a little surprised. The halftime proceedings continue here on BikeFortBend.com, and so... Uh, as fate would have it, there's one other thing that Bryce Kennard of Comcast needs to tell us about Internet Essential. We 
are so excited to announce that we have been awarded a, uh, an opportunity to, to partner with a Texas education agency. They're trying to get every um, student in Texas connected to broadband. And so um, you could get free internet at home from the state, but we'd love to share with your audience that um, they can visit teaconnecttexas.com to learn more, to make sure that they can um, find out all they need to know to get affordable internet at their home. So that is teaconnecttexas.org. Am I right? I'm sorry I said it wrong. I shouldn't have even said it. Let you say it one more time. You're the pro. teaconnecttexas.com. All right. So now we know that we'll be back with the third quarter in just a moment. Thank you very much, Bryce Kennard. Thank you, Comcast. And thank you for listening to your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. We'll be right back. Really. Right back. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. When everything works together, it's a beautiful thing. With Xfinity, you get Wi-Fi faster than a gig to power a house full of devices. So your home becomes a symphony of activity. <clears throat> we start with Dad's streaming cooking videos in the kitchen. Add a little gaming in the basement. Gorgeous. Now let's bring in some working from the couch. And finally, the sweet melody of Grandpa streaming his nature shows. Can your internet do that? And there goes Grandpa. Power a house full of connected devices. Learn more about Wi-Fi speed faster than a gig and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 12 31 21 Restrictions apply. New connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XFi gateway. Actual speeds vary. Okay, folks, the teams have returned to the field. They're kind of loosening up and moving around so that we can get the third quarter underway. And we wanted to share with you uh, how things are going with teams in Fort Bend ISD. This week on Thursday, the Willow Ridge Eagles lost a tough 42-31 decision to the Sterling Raiders right here at Hall Stadium. And that dealt a pretty strong blow to the Willow Ridge Eagles playoff hopes. Their record is now 4-2 in district games, and they are tied at 4-2 with the Madison Marlins for the fourth and final playoff spot out of District 11, 5A, Division 2. And Madison and Willow Ridge play each other on October 30th. Very, very important game. <clears throat> so the Eagles are going to be a must-win situation there. The Marshall Buffs, of course, leading the way, 8-0 overall and 6-0 in district. They lead District 11 5A Division II, and uh, there's no way in the world that Marshall's going to get beat by anybody during the regular season, and we expect them to make a very strong run at winning Region Three and getting to a state championship game for what would be the third time in a four-year span. And it is those Sterling, uh, Houston Sterling is the Raiders. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Now we know that uh, number 12 is Brent Johnson of Travis. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so uh, anyway, 
I was off track a little bit. The Sterling Raiders, the ones that defeated Willow Ridge earlier this week, they are now at six and one and in the second position in district. And then Galena Park is at five and one. And Galena Park plays Willow Ridge on the final uh, night of the season. So, in fact, I think it's the final Saturday of the season. It will be a huge game for Willow Ridge. I hope that they are still in contention. All right, here we begin the third quarter. Ultramari kicking off for Dulles. The Vikings trail 16 to nothing. And from the five yard line, straight up the middle, that is Donick and Joku, and he gets to the 35 yard line, and two flags come down. I think one of them might be for some kind of uh, physical infraction, and perhaps another one would be for, I don't know, language or something, Kovo? I, uh, I think they're going to get a holding for sure. You saw something after the play? Yeah, I saw one flag go down yep. early on, and then right about the time uh, that Njoku had been brought down, I saw a flag go up as the referee was being passed by two players, uh. one from Dulles, one from Travis. Perhaps that might be an offsetting then if, he, if in that situation. A lot yeah. of times you get an offsetting. Hopefully. No harm, no foul. He's going to speak. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So um, someone from Dulles kind of lost their composure, and there was holding on Travis, but there's also a personal foul on the Vikings. Now, sometimes they aren't necessarily offsetting penalties. I guess in this case they are. Sometimes if one penalty is more severe than the other, they will enforce one, and they're not necessarily offsetting. But in this case, it is offsetting, and the Vikings are just going to kick it again from the 40, just like they did before. Good energy from the Dulles sideline. Yeah, they, they look like they are not about to quit. They're going to play hard and see if they can make something happen here. Here's the story of a kicker named Brady. Brady Ultramari, he's a left footer. And one guy comes onto the field late for Dulles, so they have all 11 out there. It's Travion Richard. That, and that's... wait a minute, I think he's the 12th man, and that's against the rules, and a flag goes down. It's a substitution infraction. So the third quarter is off to a rousing start here. That just sucks. Whenever you, <laughs> you have, you know, you have your coaches trying to get your kids hyped up, and you're dancing on the sideline and doing jumping jacks, and then you only have ten guys out there. And you have to run a guy out late, and you get a penalty and back up five yards. It's just that's tough. But I, I, lo I love what they're trying to get going on the sideline, trying to get that energy going, even though they're down two scores. Like that's what you want to see, you know. So hopefully they can get it going here and get a get a nice uh, a nice play in the kickoff. And you know what? It, it's the coach. It's the coach in the red, like. Uh, windbreaker there he, he's doing jumping jacks and trying to get the kids fired up so I, I like seeing that Ultramari gets it in the air and again it is Dominic and Joku from the 15 yard line up the right hash marks breaks a tackle stiff arm somebody keeps going across the 30 still twisting and turning gets to the 40 outside the numbers on the far side and tripped up at the 46 he was uh he was not to be denied until finally he was and Kyle Bautista made the tackle on special teams for the Vikes. Good field position for the Travis Tigers who lead it 16 to nothing. Quick look at class 10-5A division one. Hightower was undefeated in their district games until they got beat 55 to seven on Thursday by Peto, which leads the way at six and zero in that district. Hightower second at six and two, but tied with Manville and Angleton. There is a running play over the left side. It is Singletary, and he picks up three. A violent collision over yeah, there. Yeah, number four, uh, Jalen Brown just got up, fired up. I mean, like I said, I, I've been really impressed with the energy that Dulles came out with, has come out with in the second half. Even though they gave up the long return, like the body language from the players is showing a lot of energy. So I, I think they had a good conversation at halftime and said, "Hey guys, let's let's just give it everything we got here in the third quarter." Second and seven. Anthony Njoku throws to Drew Sissom on a quick little comeback route. It's going to be a short gain and a twist. Awkwardly, uh, Sissom goes down and uh, nothing dirty about it, but Jeff Ohakawa tackled him. 
and it twisted his right knee. It got kind of folded up strangely underneath him. And this puts Coach System in a difficult situation as he's head football coach, but also a father. As you see him walking out to midfield, uh, his wife Kelly Connor System, who I'm friends with on Facebook and always just does such a great job posting uh, photos and support of the team and her husband and her son. So this is we're all kind of holding a bated breath here to hope that Drew's okay. You, you said it correctly, Roger. He's got bent back in a funny kind of way, and it looks like they're working on the right leg. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, you mentioned Mrs. Sissom. I got to meet her the night that Travis took on Hightower in a scrimmage at Travis, and um, I talked to her for about 30 seconds before I realized who she was. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's such an inspiring story um, that Trey – the head coach overcame multiple myeloma, that yes. serious blood cancer. Yes. And coincidentally, uh, this past week, General Colin Powell passed away, yeah, and right. he suffered from the same illness. And he passed away at 84 years old. So, you know, one of the things we need to continue to be thankful when we ask for something and the miracle comes, the healing comes, and, and uh, make sure we don't forget about you know something wonderful that happened but uh, unfortunately it looks like uh drew sisson may have well he's got I some kind of injury you know to his right knee probably yeah, yeah it's hard to say i mean it could also be his right ankle could be could be yeah i, I i'm gonna guess ankle I, you know i feel like i feel like he just got bent back in a freakish kind of way and i i don't know i'm gonna go on a limb and say this this is not gonna be the worst case scenario you know what i mean i just i mm. think he just got twisted back on that ankle is what i'm hoping for Okay, and Coach Trey Sissom is one of those that has uh, got one of Drew's arms draped around his neck to make sure he doesn't put any pressure on the ankle or knee or whatever it happens to be. And there was a, a penalty against Travis on the play, and we were so concerned with the injury that we didn't really see the call. Did, did you? I didn't see it. No, I, I missed it, yeah. So it's, it's pretty major, though. So second down and 22 yards to go for the Tigers. Joku claps his hands together, drops back, and throws. And he's got Van Wick Man, Van near Wick. the far sideline, and he picks up, let's see, that's 12, about 15 of what they needed. So it'll be third down and seven. Is Van Wick typically the lead receiver? Yeah, he's he's one of those possession receivers. Yeah. And uh, I would say if I were to guess the volume of completions, he gets the most receptions. I would agree. Very makeable on third and seven, and Joku drops back. They've really protected him well tonight. Has plenty of time. Far sideline, in and out of the hands of Van Wick and Jalen Brown, Wick. right on top of him. He likes Van Wick for sure, but that's the thing, you know, Coach System, you know, like you're talking about, he's already going, he's right back to coaching the game, you know, and that's the thing when, you know, even though you're, you're, a, you're a dad and you're probably wondering what's going on back there, you know, you're coach first right now, you know, and you got 50 other boys there that, are, that you're in charge of and trying to, you know, so he, Really, you know, I respect coaches so much. Something I did for 11 years, and I just that's why I like doing this. I like to highlight what they do and just uh, pay homage to it. From one Nick's Italian restaurant family connection to another, it is Antonio Rubio punting to Carter Truscott, whose grandfather greeted us earlier. And that's a very short punt, except it rolls. I'm going to say twice as far as it flew. <laughs> yeah, and it goes all the way down to the. 17 and a half, and that's where Dulles will get the football. And now, one thing that they need to keep in mind, and this is kind of optimistic thinking go get a touchdown, and when you do, you got to go for two. They're down 16, so it wouldn't make sense to Agreed. kick for one. Yep. Go ahead and go I for two. Totally agree. Mark Tisdell has gone all the way at quarterback. Looks like Devin Graham is lined up behind him in that wing tee and then they toss it and there goes Diedrich Hubbard over the right side never really had daylight to run through but he followed his blockers nicely and picked up three and a half that 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 right there it's only three four yards but that's what you want to do in a wing tee offense you want to just be able to consistently replicate that play over and over again because that's a good football play you know in today's day and age it may not look like it but uh that, that was a great job of the O-line getting a body on a body and the, the runner fighting hard. And that, that's what they're looking to do with this wing T style of offense. One of the popular expressions is to say it's not sexy. You know, just three or four yards, and there's Devin Graham right through the middle, and he, he gets a necktie 
uh, <laughs> courtesy of, uh, let's see, that was Desan Thomas. And uh, I guess nothing illegal about that. I remember when I was in elementary school, I didn't get to play peewee football. My parents didn't let me play till I was in junior high. But I had Same a buddy here. who played peewee, and he said his coaches told him there is nothing that you can't do to a ball carrier except grab his face mask. In the old days, that was the only thing that you could not do. Third right. down and a long three. There goes Hubbard. Nice run. I don't know how he found room. He's close to a first down. I think he's a little short, but based on where one of the officials is, I think they're going to give him a good spot. They got and it. yeah, he got it. Roger, have you ever seen? You would like this documentary potentially. Have you ever seen the like our TV show Friday Night Tykes? Friday Night Tykes. No, I have it's, not. So it's a docu series that follows around like basically bad. Kiwi football coaches that like promote the bad yeah. things, and I think that mo I'm sure most coaches are good at the Kiwi level. There are some really bad ones out there that teach unsafe techniques, and they need to be eradicated. And I'll, I'll let you narrate this play, and then I'll finish that thought real quick. And on first and ten, here's a toss back, and here's a, a tackle by Thomas and Olerun Femi of Travis. Alfred Entwee carries it. So what are some examples of that bad coaching it, it, for little it's, kids? It's like uh, unsafe drills a lot of the times. And, and Drew System is running on the sidelines. So Drew System's okay. Oh, I good, think, good, good. I think he got more shocked than anything. I think he got bent back in a weird kind of way and almost kind of scared himself. But he is running on the sideline. Uh, but it, it's unsafe drills. And a lot of times these drills get posted to social media, and I'll see NFL players comment. And I'll, One more play, then I'll finish it. And that is Devin Graham. I'm not sure, but I think maybe he was under center, possibly. But he carried it for maybe a yard or two. It'll be third and four. Go ahead. So, th so these videos will get posted about, about these, like, very dangerous drills. And you see NFL players commenting, like, these coaches need to all be removed. And that's the thing. I love seeing pro players. Like, they understand, as, as, as professionals who do it for a, a living, how physical and dangerous this game is, it, game is and how important your health is. And so kids, young kids, the brains are still developing. Like we, that, there's no place for that, for some adults to get satisfaction watching two kids ram into each other and do un kids unsafe stuff. Kids who are coached that way are going to think that is what's normal. Agreed. So uh, anyway, I, I, I like that you, 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 know, you kind of brought that up a little bit. And I, th I think that uh, I, I love youth athletics, uh, but I just think we need to have the right people in there that are, that are putting the kids' uh, safety and future first. Uh, we're going to take a time out. I'm not going to go to a break. I'm going to tell you a story that yep. uh, helped me decide something when I was still a television reporter in El Paso, where El Paso is not the youth football capital of the world, but, you know, um, I was covering a news story about a youth football league where the, the parents got together to argue because one coach had asked an official would it be okay? I have a little device that I think I could put in my quarterback's helmet. And this was very early on when they had introduced those those little radios where you sure. could tell the quarterback what the play is. Well, um, the official, rather than look at the rule book and figure out if it was legal or not, he said, I ain't got any problem with that. And so one team started using that, and one of their opponents figured out that it is illegal. Okay, hold that thought. Third down and four. Vikings running straight ahead, fighting for the first down. And I think that's the first carry for Kenneth Davis. If I'm not mistaken. No, it's Terrell Potter. Correction, sophomore running back. And he's two yards shy of the first down. It's going to be fourth and two. So at the time, my wife was expecting our first child, Warren, who is now 24 years old and in the Air Force. And that meeting went on for three hours. We did a 6 o'clock live shot story on it, and then at 10 o'clock they were still arguing. And I'll bet you know what I said to my pregnant wife when I got home. Fourth down and two. Dulles going for it. Toss sweep. There goes Tilly. Jackson Tilly. First down at the 40-yard line. Hang on to the football. They push him back. But that is going to get the job done. And Diedrich Hubbard had the football, but I thought, okay, obviously I was wrong. Yeah. Th th uh, this is, uh, Diedrich Hubbard. Th this is the wing tee offense to perfection. Okay. Was, yep. So anyway, I went home and I said, honey, we are not going to go and argue for four hours in a YMCA meeting room or wherever this thing sure. was over 
an eight-year-old football league. We're not going to do it. Yeah, that's one where the adults care about it way more than the kids yeah. do. And that's not where they want. Kids were outside playing yeah, tag in the exactly. yard. <laughs> and there they go with continuing the wing tee offense. And that time it's a run for no gain as they put it in the arms of Terrell Potter. Second down and 10 yards for the Vikings. Alfred Entwi comes in. And we're more than halfway through the third quarter. It's still 16 to nothing. Travis on top of Dulles on what is becoming a cool night. Got moist air and a fairly brisk wind. There goes Tilly in motion and Tisdale is gonna throw. He drops back, throws over the middle and it's incomplete. I don't know if he was trying to get it to Antwi oh. or Anthony Garza. What's going on here? We got a scrum. Oh, we got a pushing and shoving match. There are a couple of Travis players that are near the Dulles bench. And there are all kinds of flags all over the place. And there is a Travis coach who has come all the way over. No, or is that's, that a, that's, that's, that's a Dulles that's coach. That's a hype Dulles coach. Okay, so he's just trying to separate everybody, yeah. be peacemaker, and... You know, I really wish that we had a clearer uh, sounding microphone when the referee talks to us because I really would like to hear, you know, what's going to happen here. I, You think this might lead to an ejection or two? Potentially, yes. One of the players, I believe, took his helmet off, and I think that's going to be the big no-no. Okay, well, I do see one very agitated Dulles Viking. It's R.J. Martin, and his, his helmet is off, and he's surrounded by three teammates who are just trying to calm him down yeah he was basically uh he was blocking uh he's locked up blocking a, a travis defender and it came all the way to the sideline and the two of them just continued on after the after the whistle and that's kind of where it sprung and then then the rest of it was just teammates trying to come to each other's defenses and things got a little escalated um. by the way want to say something while they sort this out uh, South Carolina getting trounced by Texas A&M. It's 41 to nothing. And in the third quarter, Devon A-Chain of Fort Bend Marshall. Could that have sounded any worse, James? Yeah, uh, I mean. I, I, okay, I so know. it was unsportsmanlike conduct yeah. against Dulles and personal foul against Travis, and it's a wash, offsetting Correct. penalties. Uh, but anyway, Devon A chain, a 35 yard touchdown run. The former Marshall Buff has done some amazing things already for AM. Yes, he has. And of course, Anaya Smith, one of the, one of the better Dulles Vikings of this 21st century. He is scoring touchdowns, it seems like, every time AM takes the field. Well, not every time they take the field. Every time they play a game, Anaya Smith is scoring. So we have third down and 10 yards to go for the Dallas Vikings. 4.45 to go. And so we were looking for the old heave-ho, thumb-over-the-shoulder signal by the referee whose words we couldn't understand. And nobody was ejected. So that's that's good news for both teams, but the officials are going to have to make sure they keep everything under control. The Dulles coach in the windbreaker, I want to know what fitness program he's on and what kind of supplements and energy drink. Because he, he's incredibly active. Like when he was separating those kids, you see how fast he was moving? It just, yeah, he was. He, he's really, uh, he, he is jacked up. Trey Sissom has been talking with a couple of officials over there on the far side. He looks kind of annoyed about something. <laughs> and we have a very adamant, very young fan up here. Well, the proceedings have kind of hit a lull here. All right, now we are over the football and ready to snap it. Third down and 10 from the 41 for the Vikings. Tisdale bootleg to the right. Look inside line. Devin Graham got it. 
fighting for the first down and he got it. Nice strong run after the catch. Temi Osinike made the tackle for Travis but not before the Vikes pick up a first down and Devin yeah. Graham is fired up. Yeah, I mean that Travis was celebrating like a big hit, but I mean I would say Devin Graham gave as much as he got on that one. And the, the Vikings also got up celebrating, so that was uh, like, I spoke I'm sorry, Kovo, I spoke too soon. It was a nine yard gain, it's fourth and one. I could have sworn they gave him the first down. I thought I, I had thought seen so too. the sticks moved. Okay, so what can they do with this wing T? Get that critical yard. There goes Devin Graham over the right side. I think he made it. And now we're going to have a uh, little more snarling and yeah. snapping. It's getting chippy of these Under guys. control, yeah. hopefully. By the way, you see a huge young man out there, Jaden Flowers. 77, offensive lineman, the right tackle for the Vikings. Yes. He's almost a head taller than most of his teammates on offense. And, man, he can, he can cut a wide swath for you. First down and 10. Offsides. Free play. Free play. Tisdale's going to throw it, and it's over the head of his intended receiver, Marvin Thomas, outside the numbers on the near side. 4.08 to go. Second down and 10. Vikes, they trail 16 to nothing. In the first district game of the year, Kovo, uh, Dulles, even though their strong suit is not really throwing the football, they moved the ball a lot late against Clements. And they almost pulled off a win, and they threw a pass over an intended receiver's head in the last minute that would have given them a first down near the 10-yard line, and we were going to have one of those fantastic finishes. But the ball fell incomplete, and Dulles uh, it was a very disappointing loss for them, and they really haven't been the same since. First down and five as the... Offensive, uh, it was offsides called on Travis, as Kovo noted. Terrell Potter carries and gets one yard. That's it. Second down and four now for the Vikings. Seems like it's a little, like a little bit of scuffling after every play now. Which makes sense because, I mean, especially with this style of offense, I mean, th those offensive linemen are, are firing off the ball every single play. So, I mean, it's physical blocking every single play. So I've... I'm not surprised these emotions are starting to boil over here. Yeah, and it's it's one of those formations. Everybody's just, the splits are cut down. Everybody's in tight, elbow to elbow. There's a lot of togetherness. Some of it is good and some of it is not so good. Toss sweep. And a short gain, Justin Ofoma, or was it, it's, I can't tell who it was. Diedrich Hubbard, number 12, yes, Hubbard. And he advances it to the 41-yard line where it's going to be third down and three for the Vikings. On comes Jalen Brown. Gives the play to Mark Tisdale. They're, the Vikings always taking time in the huddle. They kind of like to shorten the game, but you can't shorten it too much when you're down by 16. Up to the line they come with a third down and three. And it's back to Brown. He bobbled the toss and took him that extra split second that allowed the Travis defense to arrive in well, big numbers. And it's a loss of a couple of yards. Parker Reed got there first in his fourth and five. The, the, this, you know, this is the first year that I, I can recall Dulles running the wing tee. This new, I, yeah, you know, that, that's so definitely new. You can tell it's been installed this year. It, it's not cr fully crisp yet. When you watch a team that's, that's majored in the wing tee for several years, like these little bad pitches and things don't happen, you know, and uh, this, everything's a little faster, a little more misdirection. So they're still getting used to it, honestly, in the first year. Timeout taken by the Vikings before they run a play on fourth and five. We'll take it with them. VipeFortBend.com at 16 to nothing Tigers. 156 to go in the third. First Iron Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, 
and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Tire and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. but I don't want to risk the Dodgers. <laughs> By the way, Kovo and I are talking baseball during that timeout, and uh, we noticed that the Braves are leading the Dodgers in a game that would eliminate L.A. That would be nice. We both agree. On fourth and five, Tisdale rolls to the right, throws far sideline over the head of Jalen Brown incomplete. Dominic Njoku arrives right there as the ball does, just in case, but it was... Not going to be caught, and the ball goes over on downs. Yeah, so, number four, uh, Brown came open. You know, I, I think that uh, I think Tisdale held on to it just a little bit too long. I think if he just would have let it go sooner. But I think he wanted to get out a little bit further and make sure that he could verify that it was open and kind of put everything into the throw. But uh, by that time, the defense was starting to recover. Yep, and we were talking baseball, and uh, Tisdale is a baseball player for the Vikings. So the Tigers take over first and 10 from their own 43, and there goes Singletary running hard over the right side. And he gets a six-yard gain to the 49 of the Tigers. And I was thinking maybe after that long drive, Travis would just come out and wing it for the end zone. But uh, they just don't have quite the same aggressive tendencies on offense that they've had during the days when... Uh, Let's see, he had Eric Rodriguez as quarterback, and can't remember the name of the kid before him. There goes Singh. Actually, it's a keeper oh, by Njoku, and he gets inside the 40-yard line of Dulles with a first down, and that's a run of 13 yards. Let's see, who was that guy? I know. Kind of like I, Sunshine in... Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. In uh, Remember the Titans. His name will come to me, me soon. Too. Amron yeah. Jeffrey, that's, that's exactly it. it. First down and 10, and Joku lost one up, and it went over the outside shoulder of Van Wick, who is expecting it over the inside shoulder. Jared Mitchell on the coverage for the Vikes. Second down and 10, Tigers from the 40. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. It's kind of cold up here, you know? Yeah, a little bit. Well, you're... You got Michigan roots, so yeah, I've, it may not feel like anything to you. I, I feel pretty good right now. Th thankfully, you bailed me out bringing the hoodie back <laughs> for me. I appreciate it. A&M now leads 44 to nothing. I don't know who scored that touchdown. There goes Singletary busting out inside the 20, picks up speed, and goes into the end zone for a touchdown. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been looking at my phone. Singletary goes in from 40 yards away and... That may be more than the Dulles Vikings can overcome as it brings the score to 22 to nothing with the extra point to come. And Drew Sissom uh, had the ankle injury, had to be helped off earlier, and now he's out there to do the holding. And he's kind of sticking his right foot back a little bit differently, I think, than he might otherwise do to hold it for Antonio Rubio. It's almost like a catcher's stance in a sense. And oh. Rubio. He just got hit. Yeah. The guy coming off the edge trying to block. Man, he's going to be sore tonight. Yeah. He's Once the adrenaline wears off and the swelling sets in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, flag came out. A little more extracurriculars going on after the play, Roger. All right. Well, that's a shame. Hope this day game doesn't get ugly in the final 12 minutes and 43 seconds. We'll take a break. Our new score, 23 to nothing. Dulles trailing. Travis. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. 
We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. Here we are back on VipeFortBend.com as there was unsportsmanlike conduct on the Vikings. Jalen Brown crashing into the holder, Drew Sissom, after the kick was away. And so uh, Rubio gets to tee it up on the Vikings, 45. And it's a short high kick. Cole Hodges lets it drop. It is loose. He does pick it up near the 10 and wrestle out of bounds. And now a flag is going to be thrown on the Travis Tigers. And we know who number 12 is now. <laughs> we also know that he just got a penalty against him. That's Brent Johnson, sophomore wide receiver. He was three or four yards beyond the boundary. And he kept wrestling with Cole Hodges. And so, you know, there was the unsportsmanlike conduct on the extra point kick. That penalized Dulles, and now Travis is going to be guilty of a penalty. You know, for me, Roger, every time if, if I were to get a uh, other team gets a personal foul on the extra point, and I'm the one kicking, uh -huh. I'd onside kick it every time. Yeah. Because even if you don't get it, it's not bad field position. You know, so that that I feel that way, and I also feel like if a team's going to be offsides when I'm kicking the extra point, I'm going to go for two. Because I just feel like from that distance you can punch it in and, pen and actually actually punish them for their penalty. Good. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you should do. It's kind of like bunting when three of the infielders are shifted to one side of second base. There goes Terrell Potter running off the right side for the Vikings and picking up two on the first play of this possession. Davis Ochoa on the tackle for the Travis Tigers who... If they can hold on to this 23 to nothing lead, will improve to four and one in district play and no worse than one game behind the Ridgepoint Panthers and perhaps the Bush Broncos. If Bush finishes the game they started today on Monday night with a win over George Ranch. There goes Jalen Brown up the middle, running tough. A lot of people in there pushing and shoving and trying to bring him down, but he had the good leg drive and he picks up yardage to within two yards of what he needed for a first down, and that ends the third quarter, 23 to nothing. Travis on top of Dulles. We'll step aside and be back on VibeFortBend.com. When everything works together, it's a beautiful thing. With Xfinity, you get Wi-Fi faster than a gig to power a house full of devices, so your home becomes a symphony of activity. <clears throat> we start with Dad streaming cooking videos in the kitchen. Add a little gaming in the basement. Gorgeous. Now let's bring in some working from the couch. And finally, the sweet melody of Grandpa streaming his nature shows. Can your internet do that? And there goes Grandpa. Power a house full of connected devices. Learn more about Wi-Fi speed faster than a gig and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 12-31-21. Restrictions apply. New connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and x gateway. Actual speeds vary. Here we go. Fourth quarter. Dulles with a third down and two. Run to the left. Jalen Brown with second effort gets the needed yardage for the first down. Did he? Well, I thought he did. I don't think so. Uh, okay, you're right. He got nothing. I guess I was looking at one of the guys who was trying to block for him who'd kind of tumbled in front of him. It's tough, I mean, because it's such a, a jumble of bodies in there. It is, honestly, because like yeah, the formations are so compacted. Uh, it, it is hard to locate the ball and see where it exactly it's at. It's like living in a tiny house. <laughs> I see those shows where people are living in a tiny house. Uh, not for me. Sorry, you, I need you, space. Yeah. 
Fourth down and two. There goes Jalen Brown. Yes, he got the first down. He's breaking free across midfield. 40-yard line, near sideline. Makes a move back to the inside and wrestled down near the 30. And, uh-oh, uh, Travis is going to have a friendly fire injury here because Aaron Mendiola made the tackle. And as he was about to go down along the sideline, his teammate, uh, Thomas and Olerun Femi, didn't mean to, but he came sliding into him and kind of, you know, he landed awkwardly, and so he's getting medical attention on the Dulles sideline. We'll step aside. 11.05 to go in the fourth quarter. 23 to nothing, Travis, and we shall return. It'll be first and 10 for the Vikings at the 31 of the Tigers when we come back. First Iron Automotive is passing out the treats for your vehicles the entire month of October. $25 off select AC Delco batteries, $50 off brake pad replacement, and $75 off four tires. Head to the website firsttireauto.com and claim your savings. You don't even have to wear a costume to get these Halloween treats all month long. First Iron Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointments today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Good news, Travis fans. Aaron Mendiola, after he had been down on the ground for uh, over a minute, Got up and ran across the field. Looks like he's going to be okay. It's first and 10 for Dulles at the 31 of the Tigers. And Tisdell fakes a toss, throws, has a wide open receiver, and gets a completion inside the 20 to the 19. And that will be another first down, a 13-yard pickup as they got the ball into the hands of Victor Arungboye. I, I, Say Arungboye. Very well I had done. to practice it over and over. I, I'm a big fan of what Dulles does on offense, and I, I know it may not be the prettiest thing, and maybe some fans may be frustrated that you know they haven't scored yet tonight. But I think had if it, had they done a conventional offense, this score may be much more lopsided than what it is right now. I I will uh, go with what you say. There's a handoff to Devin Graham. Four yards down to the 16. It's going to be second down and six. And uh, you know me, I've always come to the defense of like uh, Coach Andrews at, at Kempner with the flex bone, which mm -hmm. is a similar style of offense. And did I hear? Did you tell me that they're not running the flex bone anymore? That's right. Kempner has uh, decided that they felt yeah. like their talent didn't really match the flex bone okay. anymore. Well, here's the thing. I think that if uh, Coach uh, Bird has elected to go to this, if he wants to keep running it. I hope that he's able to stay in his position to, to take – it takes a couple of years to really install this correctly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they toss it back. There goes Hubbard inside the 16 to the 14. And that will leave them with a third down and four to go. Praise to Saulu on the tackle for your Tigers. I think if, if they stick with it, it's going to be in year three and year four that you really start seeing the offense start paying dividends. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I think for right now they're still kind of feeling out, but you can see it still has the uh, potential for big plays. You know, as, as the defense starts creeping up and creeping up and creeping up, you can hit them on passes. You can crease a little run and, and make a big play. So uh, I, I like what they're doing. See what they can do on third down and four. You know they'll go for it if they come up short here. There goes Jalen Brown up the middle, driving, pushing, moving ahead. And I think he's within a yard of the first down. Thomas and Olerun Femi at the bottom of the pile for the Tigers. And also down there, now peeling himself off the field turf is Tristan Mason. And it's gonna be fourth and Man. two. I thought it would be fourth I, and one. I thought it'd be fourth and inches. You know what I mean? But it, but it's a full two yards to go. Yeah. Jalen Brown comes off. Diedrich Hubbard is out there. And now we have a timeout taken by the Vikings. We'll take it with them. This is VipeFortBend.com.
Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. It's a quiet night here at Hall Stadium. Uh, the only organized noise that we have is the Dulles cheerleaders. They are the only extracurricular group other than these two football teams because we had the weather situation. A lot of folks had to go home. Fourth down and two for Dulles. There goes Jalen Brown looking for daylight, stretching. I don't, think I don't know it. that he got there. He needed to get to the 10-yard line. I think Travis pushed him back. Kendrick Taylor sacrificing his body. And now they signal that it is first and 10 for the Travis Tigers. The defense has held. And so I don't know what Dulles really has going for them now because they're out of timeouts. They're down 23 to nothing. They just came up short inside the red zone. And I see that the scoreboard clock operator is being a little bit merciful here. On a change of possession, the clock is supposed wow. to stop, but they're just going to yeah, I don't let like it that. go a little bit. Uh, not, like I said, I, I've been a part of many running clocks one of my time as head coach at Aldine, but th this game, it's, it's it's only 23 points. We, we have seen crazy things happen. Like right now, there's a fumble, yeah. and, there, and there's a scoop and score. Like this is a different ball game. So I, I don't think they should try to steal seconds uh, here on a running clock. And as far as we know, uh, Coach Brown is not uh, – I'm sorry, Coach Bird is not um, – protesting of course he, he might not have noticed that sure. the clock was running as it is a run of three yards on first down for singletary second I, down and seven i think that's just the clock operator you know just been a long day just trying to <laughs> shave a couple seconds here and there you know <laughs> but. yep guess who's in it tight end or h back actually sam kinnick all right Here's Singletary running behind Sam Kinnick and slamming over the left side. Carries it out to the 18, and that'll set up a third down and three for the Travis Tigers. On the stop for Dulles was Travion Richard. Kinnick's finally a senior. I feel like he's been there a long time. Yeah. You know, Patrick has, uh, our friend Patrick huh? Kinnick, has older children. You know, like guys closer to 30 than 20. Really? I didn't realize that until I asked him last night or no i guess it was thursday i can't remember it must have been friday because uh, i did it solo uh on the peito hightower game anthony and joku calling his own number keeping the football going over the left side and got more than what he needed for the first down advances it to the 26 yard line and before travis snaps it again we're probably going to be past the midway point of this fourth quarter yeah, Patrick's from the great state of Wisconsin. We many, I've met many great people from there, and I'm so happy that Michigan finally took care of business against Wisconsin this year and didn't get embarrassed up there in Madison. And they do run the play before there's six minutes left, and Joku in the spread formation runs to his right in a, a play that seemed to have no real purpose. Dominic Williams chases him down, and Dominic Williams, despite the fact that the Vikes are down 23 to nothing, has been playing an impactful defensive game. He, he's their defensive MVP for sure. That is a tackle for a loss of seven yards on a pretty mobile quarterback. The, Dulles has a lot of seniors. I just As I look through the names that we're calling, you know, a lot of them are seniors. Like, but that's a little, little problematic, but there are some definitely some good uh, returning underclassmen as well. That's true. All right. By the way, I want to say thank you to Merle Bertrand, who is uh, Merle. Well, he can do just about everything, and he is he is our producer, our quality assistant, our guru, whatever. I wonder, whatever how, else. I wonder how our guy Merle, who knows a big Cubs fan, how he feels about our guy Dusty leading us to the World Series here. Maybe maybe we will finally be the ones to have uh, get Dusty that uh, 
that championship ring. Ah, Cubs fan, schmubs fan. Let's take a break. <laughs> Hope he didn't hear that. When everything works together, it's a beautiful thing. With Xfinity, you get Wi-Fi faster than a gig to power a house full of devices. So your home becomes a symphony of activity. <clears throat> we start with Dad streaming cooking videos in the kitchen. Add a little gaming in the basement. Gorgeous. Now let's bring in some working from the couch. And finally, the sweet melody of Grandpa streaming his nature shows. Can your internet do that? And there goes Grandpa. Power a house full of connected devices. Learn more about Wi-Fi speed faster than a gig and other fast speed options. Get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with the one-year agreement. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. Ends 12-31-21. Restrictions apply. New connect 50 megabits per second internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires gig internet and XI gateway. Actual speeds vary. All right, Travis called the timeout. What will they do? What will they do on second down and 17? And Joku lifts his foot, calls for the snap, drops back, and throws it down the near sideline looking for Sims. It is caught! And he goes down at the 35-yard line. It was one of those twisting, turning catches. He leaped up in the air, and as he was... Dropped it. He dropped it? Yeah. What? I mean, they're marking it incomplete. I, Man, I thought he had it. I, he definitely... He definitely had it at one point. I guess he just didn't control it all the way. Okay, well, catch or no catch, it's a penalty against the offense anyway. Just for that, you sound terrible, LOL. <laughs> Courtesy of Merle Bertrand. We're just checking if you're listening, Merle. We love <laughs> you, Merle. Making sure we didn't put you Well, to sleep, we love buddy. you. I don't love the Cubs, though. <laughs> I don't know why anyone does. Oh, Boy, I'm really on thin ice yeah, with him now. Yeah, you're pushing it, Roger. You're a little vindictive <laughs> tonight. I, I, I was saying it like I, I do like the Cubs. I've, you ever been to Wrigley? No. That might change your mind if you take a trip to Wrigleyville, Roger. I think you'd like it. Okay, they'll probably pour beer on me. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. If, Dod if I go not, to an Astros hey, game and root for the Astros. They're not Dodgers fans. They're Cubs okay. fans. Very different. <laughs> Singletary carried it up the middle for five. And that reduces what they need on third down. It's third and 21. You think they'll take another shot here, Roger, or you think they're just going to hand it off inside? I think they'll be running the football. I do too. You know, I, I used to enjoy Cub games a lot. Well, yeah, the Cubs and the, and the Braves had that baked in, you know, if WGN and TBS. Like, I know growing up as a 90s kid, like a lot of people in my generation, they are Cubs and Braves fans for that reason. Dropping back is Njoku, and he throws the screen pass intended for Sims incomplete. Dominic Williams was in the area and helped disrupt it, and so that stops the clock with 4.06 to go. You know what I think it was, Kovo, at least from the specific baseball perspective? The Astros used to be in the National League West. Uh -huh. They were in there with the Dodgers, Padres, Giants, and Braves. What are the Braves doing in the sure, NL sure, West? Yeah. But they were. But then there was... a. When they added the Rockies and the Diamondbacks, they kind of reconfigured and put the Astros in the central, a division that included the Cubs. Nice punt by Rubio. And it is Devin Graham who hey. calls a fair catch at the 48. Yeah. Oh, I left out the Cincinnati Reds. They were also in the NL West before the Astros and Reds got switched to the central. Okay. when they expanded and added the Diamondbacks and the uh, Rockies. Wow. And so that, you know, when, when the Astros and Cubs were playing each other more often and they were playing to try and win the division, that's when uh, I, you developed I fell out of favor with the Cubs and vice versa. You don't like Harry Carey? Oh, I, I found him very entertaining. <laughs> he was awesome. But I liked Milo Hamilton. He and yeah, Harry wonder. hated each other. <laughs> I didn't know that. Tisdale drops back and throws a pass that's tipped near the line. He was trying to deliver it to uh, Victor Arungboye. Yeah, I guess I don't really recall. I guess I'm, I'm a, you know, obviously a little bit. To me, it's more the Cardinals where they, where they hate, you know. I, if we're talking two different time periods, but I, I don't recall the Cubs. Uh, rivalry here quite quite so much you know the thing is i got to interview milo hamilton once 
and I was unaware of his bitter grudge, <laughs> lifelong grudge against Harry Carey, and I asked him a question about Harry, and it was tense. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm actually going we'll to talk more about that off air. I'm really interested in what that was all about. There's a hard run over the left side by Dulles, but they're down 23 to nothing, and we're under the four-minute mark. I'll bet you could find a couple of things on YouTube. You yeah. just put in Harry Carey and Milo Hamilton. and I don't know that they ever had any kind of, you know, argument in yeah. front of people that was on videotape, but I know they said things about each other. Harry Carey just seems like a gregarious, fun, loving. I, I just don't know how you could, he could get angry at him, but I'm sure, you know. So something must have must transpired between those two. Yeah. You know, Harry became such a big star. I mean, I could see how sure, someone would sure. be jealous of him. And there goes Diedrich Hubbard over the right side on second and six. You know, was that third and six? That was third. So let's okay. bring out the punt team, unless they're going to, you know, you could go either way here. You could concede and just punt it, or you could go for it. I think they're going to line up to go for it. But They'll go for it. You know, the thing I love that Dusty said, and you're, I know you're kind of a baseball purist and historian type, you know, I, I love how he said, you know, like, on the bench last night, like, I, I could hear my dad, and, I, you know, I could hear yeah. Hank Aaron mm -hmm. and Al Kaline, and they were all with us tonight. I, d I just love, I just love that Dusty. He's 72 years old. He's still sharp. He's still passionate, and he's, He's throwing it back to the greats in the game. Like I, that, that gave me chills when he said that. Yeah, and you're, you're right about what you said, I think, off air today, that uh, they really want to win for him. Tisdell throws on mm. fourth down, and he was not in sync with his yeah. intended receiver over there. And I believe the competitive part of this game is going to be over. 2-11 to go. Ball goes over on downs to Travis. And, by the way, the intended receiver was Carter Truscott. Yeah, and I know, you know, because I know I saw uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Castle Truscott had, had left, and he told us he likes to leave and beat the traffic out. So he may be listening right now. So I do want to just describe that play for him. That that was one where the quarterback was trying to throw it to the back shoulder, and Carter Carter was thinking it was going to be a deep a deep ball phase. Yeah. So that's where the miscommunication was. Will Travis keep it on the ground? Evidently, that's what they intend to do. And the first carry of the game for Tiger Horace. Or T. Horace. You pronounce his first name Tiger Nan, which is perfect for a kid who plays for Travis. But I it's think Coach Sissom said you, we just call him T. Very T. Cool. Horace. Not too many uh, first name Horace anymore. You know, boys with the name of Horace. All I remember was Horace Grant, the power forward for the Bulls. So if Merle's still yes. listening, I'm assuming he's a Bulls fan as well. Yeah, and he... You know, uh, I can't think of anyone other than Horace Grant who had that name. Horace Mann, right, was an abolitionist. And yeah, but that's the only other yeah, one. Centuries. I can, yeah, a long yeah. time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes Horace, hit at the line of scrimmage, wrestled down after he picked up one, and we're under a minute and a half. Kovo, it's been good working with you today. But, Likewise, uh, man. I mean, I, I, I wish we could have. <laughs> we weren't really in our flow with all the delay after delay after delay but uh it's always a pleasure you kind of got me into the business five years ago when i left coaching and so i always appreciate you know your gratitude and uh, like like we said you know you and me doing a broadcast i think it's kind of like riding a bike you know it's been a long time but we could pick uh pick right back up where we left off it's a nice little sideline to be in you know and someone like yourself who once coached you can stay involved and you know you you can give insights and you can tell a story or two about some of these guys that we see on the sideline calling the shots. Third down and eight, and Njoku's going to throw it. He throws Ooh. it deep down the middle. He intended it for Van Wick. Now, that's uh, let's talk about insights, Roger, as far as from the coaching perspective. That kind of thing, up 23-0, 34 seconds to go, that might be the kind of thing where I don't know the relationship between Coach Bird and Coach System. Coach System's the nicest guy in the world, so I don't yeah. think but. You know, that's the kind of thing that sometimes a certain coach is. I, I could see a, a younger Jim Harbaugh getting up in somebody's face for doing that and kind of just bumping with them a little bit. So Yeah. It, it, it's kind of like in the baseball, those unwritten rules. There's kind of some of that in football, too, a lot less. But typically you don't throw the ball, especially deep in these kinds of situations where we're kind of running out the clock. Yeah. Rubio will punt. 34 seconds to go in the game. There's one other kind of uh, coach friendship thing where you think maybe the Friendship could be tested. Another beautiful punt by Rubio, and it bounds into the end zone with 25 seconds to go. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna call running into the punter there. Oh, how about that? So if it's just running into the kicker, it won't be anything. 
Yeah. Jalen Brown yep. is uh, saying to the referee, come on, I didn't – yeah, you know, don't flag me, bro. Come yeah, on now. Yeah, it definitely was – he definitely made contact with Rubio. It was not egregious. So it should not be on the personal foul variety. Well, you know, we had um, the game between Clements and Travis, and there was a game when – Bobby Darnell was coaching for Clements, and they lost 86-20 to to Travis on a rainy Saturday yeah, night at, uh, at Mercer Stadium. And, you know, the two coaches, they are good friends. They greeted each other warmly. But you know that had to stick in a, someone's craw when someone hangs 80-plus on you. It, you know. I've had it happen to me one time. I can tell that story in a second after this point. <laughs> Well, better hurry. 24 yeah, seconds to go, and it's a re-kick by Travis after the running into the kicker penalty. And there is a directional punt. He lays it up short, and they're going to down it at the one-yard line. So it was my first year coaching at Aldean. We finished with a 2-8 and eight record, and we ended up going out to Channel View to play a game. Well, the quarterback for Channel View that night was a kid named... Uh, uh, Jalen Hurts. Yes. You heard of him? Yes, and I so have heard have of Hurts. Future uh, NFL starting quarterback for the Eagles playing against a 2-8 and eight team. You can imagine how that went. But anyway, I think the final score was like 82-14. to 14. I think it's the exact same what you just described with Bobby. Yeah. And after the game, it's actually Jalen Hurts' father, Avarion Hurts, is the head coach of Channel. He's been, been so for 15, 20 years. And he was, he's, you know, he, he we shook hands. He's very apologetic. He's, he's like, coach, I'm sorry, the coach. And I, you know, I said, no, not at all. And he, 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 he was so... Uh, he felt so bad about it. He actually called me like another two hours later that night. Called mm. me again as a coach. I just want to apologize. Like I, I did not want that score to get like that. And I said, Coach, you did nothing wrong. You handled everything professionally. You put your backups in. You just ran inside zone. You were just better than us. We have to stop you. And I, I, I put him at ease. And I, you know, but that that really impressed me. His his character and level of com concern and compassion could be the last play of the game. Throwing out of the end zone, incomplete. And the clock continues to tick even after the pass falls incomplete. And we're done here. The scoreboard yes. clock says zero. And it says Travis 23, Dulles nothing. Well, thanks, Kovo. And, uh, you know, you talk about coaches who felt like they needed to apologize to you. Well, I, I may need to apologize to Merle Bertrand for saying <laughs> <laughs> uh, things about his favorite uh, baseball team. So for James Kovaleski, Merle Bertrand, if he's not too mad at me, and the rest of the Vipe team, this is Roger Smith saying so long from Hall Stadium. It's been a long day, but the Travis Tigers improved to 4-1 and one in their district games, and they are just one game out of first place, and they still have that final game of the season against Ridgepoint. That might be what decides district again, as it so often does. Good night, everybody, and glad you were with us, and please join us. Monday night, we're going to have the continuation of the game between Bush and George Ranch, the football game. And then on Tuesday night, Travis fans will have your girls playing volleyball against Ridgepoint. And then four football games Thursday, Friday, and two on Saturday. We hope that's enough for you. Good night, everybody.